Jesus told us that the words you have given us are spirit and life. You are our life-giving support, Jesus. The very air we breathe, your spirit living in us. This morning, we cry out to you and say, without you, we cannot live. We are desperate for you. In Psalm 42, it says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you. My soul thirsts, O oh God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Good morning. Good morning. The day of Pentecost, the third great festival of the church, the day in which we celebrate God, God the Holy Spirit. At Christmas, we rejoice in God's gift of the Father with the birth of our Savior. Easter brings us the wonderful gift of Christ our Savior risen from the dead. And Pentecost brings us the glorious reality that God is uniting us together, giving us his presence through the word and the sacraments that brings us Christ. God is building us into his living house. 
And that's what we rejoice in this day. Today's word of worship you'll find on the screen, and we begin with our opening song, Let the Fire Fall.
said, Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. They were amazed and astonished, saying, How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? In the last days it shall be declared, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, has worked faith in our hearts so that we may hear the good news of salvation of our Savior, but our sins are always before us. Let us therefore confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We are helpless to amend our sinful lives without you, gracious God. For Jesus' sake, forgive us, renew us, and turn our feet to paths leasing to you. In the Garden of Eden, God created our first parents from the clay of his good earth. And when they ate of the forbidden fruit, the Word became clay himself to pay for our sins and to rise victorious. Our Heavenly Father has molded you. Christ's peace is with you. And the Holy Spirit is there in you to enkindle your faith. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
creates different languages. And along with that comes the strife and the discord, all the things that we experience in our world today. But on this glorious day of Pentecost, God unites his people together by means of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and speaks that word of Christ, that word of Christ that can be heard and understood in every language of the world. Now the whole world had one language and the same words. And as the people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower with the children of man and built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they purpose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of the whole earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song this morning is Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the of the earth. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre. With the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King of the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. The world and the world. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the people's humanity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading for today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. What sinful man did to create a God for himself in themselves, God reverses on this glorious day of Pentecost. Because while there is confusion and misunderstanding and discord, God comes to speak that one language of love through Christ our Savior. And with the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes these words of God and brings them to all people, regardless of their language, regardless of their culture, and he makes us into one living building, his church of living stone. When the day of Pentecost arrived, there were all, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And the divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together. And they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, 
and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own languages the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. We rise to the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus on Monday, Thursday predicts the events of what happens on this day that we commemorate, and Jesus pro provides us with that much-needed gift of peace that comes as that great gift of the Holy Spirit who works through the word and sacraments. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the words that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. But now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. We continue with our Song of the Day Spirit Song. Please be seated.
mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from God the Holy Spirit, who comes and brings us the greatest gift of all, the gift of God's peace. The Word of God we want to focus on for a few moments this morning on this great day of Pentecost are portions of Jesus' words from today's Gospel, where we hear verses 25 and 20 through 27. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. Dear Christian friends, the beginning days of the month of June are always kind of interesting if you are kind of a lover of history. Because these opening days of June remind us of important anniversaries in our nation's history. Anniversaries that have secured the peace here in America. And this, past, this weekend marks the anniversary of the Battle of Midway in the Pacific. And this coming week, the Battle of Normandy in France. The European Theater and the Pacific Theater. Rather interesting. Let's focus on the Battle of Normandy, D-Day as it was called, June 1944. It took tremendous planning, and that planning can be seen in these following statistics. The statistics are really mind-numbing. 5,333 ships were needed to transport the troops, and that was 175,000 men. Of those men, 3,400 were killed in action. Those missing in action, whose bodies were never discovered, was 13,175,000. This battle, together with many others, secured American peace and brought liberation for millions in Europe. And sadly, it was a battle, that, along with many battles, that many veterans of World War II never spoke of, even until their dying day. You can watch the footage. You can see the men tramping over, fighting over, crawling over, dead comrades and wounded comrades as they sought to secure that 50-mile coastline and five beaches with all of the Nazi armament of death raining down on them. Can you imagine the fear that went through the minds of those men as they were on those transport vessels? Can you imagine what went through their minds when finally the door dropped and they had to run into the water and go up on the beach? Can you imagine what it was like to crawl along with death all around you? That, my friends, is fear. Fear that you and I, by the grace of God as Americans, will not have to face, at least at the moment. It's brought a peace that we can still rejoice and find satisfaction in. But there still is fear in this world. The American Psychiatric Association reports that there are 583 different forms of fear. One in five Americans right now suffers from anxiety that needs to be treated with drugs. A life of fear, my friends, is no life at all. And sometimes people are just simply paralyzed by fear. It keeps them from living their life to the fullest. Jesus' disciples knew plenty about fear. They watched in horror as Jesus was crucified. They could hardly believe the message that Jesus was risen from the dead, even though he appeared to them again and again and gave them unqualified proof that he was truly risen from the dead. But time and time again, we read in the Gospel that Jesus appeared to them behind locked doors that were closed because of fear. Our Lord and Savior knew a thing about fear, too. Fear was always kind of nipping at his heel as he dealt with people who wanted nothing to do with him. Fear confronted him in the Garden of Gethsemane as he poured out his soul to God. But he won the battle as he commended himself to the Father. Not my will, not my fear, but your will be done. Today we rejoice on this Pentecost Sunday that God has done something about fear. 
He has brought us the gift of Jesus and his presence. The Holy Spirit comes in Christ's name. That's what we want to consider. And we want to see two things. To bring you lasting peace. And secondly, to bring you peace. Enduring peace with his presence. Now Jesus says in our text, The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Yes, these disciples were living behind locked doors. But on this day, Pentecost Sunday, God removed the fear as those wonderful tongues of fire flickered over their heads and suddenly they opened the doors after the sound of that mighty rushing wind and they proclaimed the glory of Christ in all these different languages that left people astonished and bewildered. In an instant, their lives were changed. Changed because of this blessing of God, the Holy Spirit's coming. So first of all, we want to know that as we look at what God is doing on Pentecost, He's bringing us first and foremost God's gift of peace. And this is a permanent peace. This isn't peace that we find in the moment when finally we can finally sit down in our favorite easy chair and relax or, or get away from it all and finally turn off the cell phone or turn off the, the light as we finally make our ways to bed and finally just heave a great big deep sigh. This isn't the kind of peace that comes from the stroke of a politician who's keeping his fingers crossed hoping that this is going to bring some kind of peace. What this means is a peace that no matter what happens in a world that is changing, and my friends, we need to understand that the world around us is changing underneath our feet. God and His Word will never change for you and for me. It is the same peace, it is the same truth that brought comfort to Abraham, comfort to David, comfort to all of the apostles, and comfort and peace and joy and strength as those apostles stood before the crowds on Pentecost Sunday and announced to them the wonderful works of God. So why is God's peace so different? Well, hear the words of Isaiah. Isaiah says, All people are like grass, and all beauty is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but only the word of God endures forever. And don't we see that happening in our first reading with the account of Babel? Here was a whole human race united about one grand idea. We're going to build a tower. We're going to make a name for ourselves. We're going to be bigger and stronger than anything. You see what's missing in that? What's missing in that is God. They wanted nothing to do with God. And you and I in these last times are experiencing the very same thing. As we see the world around us going crazy. As we see the world around us becoming all, all worked up with uniting people around one grand thought. Yes, we look at these things and we become fearful. We become afraid. But God tells us there is no need for us to be afraid. It's peace. God's peace is enduring peace. Maybe to put it another way, as we look at our lives, even as Christians, and I'm always kind of thinking of that old gyroscope that I used to play with as a kid. I was fascinated with gyroscopes. You'd get them at the store, Woolworths, you'd wind them up and you'd pull them out, and then you would just sit and watch them just move, you know, and it was, it was almost gravity defined. You didn't, you didn't know how it really worked, but it was just wonderful. But then all of a sudden, the gyroscope fell. It began to wobble, it began to twist, it began to stumble, and then all of a sudden, it was over. My friends, for us as Christians, many times, our lives are like that too. God strengthens us through the work of the Holy Spirit. But the sad thing is, many times we let our lives just kind of run on empty. Just like that old gyroscope, we begin to falter, we begin to stumble. And we find ourselves having no fuel left, either physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And that's why we need the work of the Holy Spirit. We need the work of the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with strength and with peace. 
that can only come from Christ. So secondly, we want to note that the Holy Spirit's gift of peace in the Word and Sacraments is a consistent peace. As much as we want to stay, things always to stay the same, they never really do. Everything is changing. In fact, we're always looking for ways to make life easier for ourselves, to make life better. And one of those things that we thought in the beginning was going to make our lives a lot easier and a lot better was the cell phone. Steve Jobs, the inventor and the founder of Apple, once made this remark, you show people the things that they need before they need it, and you will, they, you will open up a whole new world for them. Yes, the cell phone may have opened up new worlds for us, but the reality is, is it making life better? Is it making life easier? Is it making your life more wonderful? Or do you find yourself being a slave to all of the beeps, the rings, and the vibrations? My friends, God offers us ultimate and permanent peace. And that's what Peter knew. He boldly stood before the Jewish council, the Sanhedrin, the same group of people who had condemned Jesus to death later on after the events of Pentecost. And he says these words from the Pentecost sermon. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That name is Christ. God has permanently decreed that as a result of what Christ has done, he is going to unite all people to hear this message of his Son, who lived, suffered, died, and rose again, so that all sins can be forgiven, and God and man can be united once again. This peace comes to us when it's preached, when it's taught, when it's heard, when it's read, when it's received through holy baptism, when we partake of it in, in God's gift of the Lord's Supper. All of these may be different forms and different ways, but it's always the same gift. The gift of God, the gift of peace in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so what that means is we don't have to run around looking to bring peace for ourselves, peace in our lives, a moment of respite in a world that is just, like I said a moment ago, spinning out of control. Looking for a bit of truth here and there when God is providing the real truth that surpasses all understanding. Wasn't that the peace that God gave to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when they were terrified? because they saw the shame of their sins, and God spoke those wonderful words to them, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and your offspring. It's the same kind of peace that God brought to Noah, as he found himself in an ark, as God kept him safe and secure for over a year, as the world underneath them was destroyed. It's the same kind of peace that brought Comfort to Daniel as his heart was terrified as he was thrown into a den of lions. Paul spoke before kings and emperors, not knowing exactly what was going to happen next, but firmly trusting and believing that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So what we want to know is that finally it is a genuine peace. The peace that God gives at Pentecost will last for time and eternity. Our world today is desperately looking for peace. Maybe you're looking for that peace too. It isn't going to be found in alcohol. It isn't going to be found in drugs. It isn't going to be more me time or running after the next best thing that the world itself runs after. It's only temporary, folks. It doesn't satisfy and it doesn't fill that aching need we all have. But look to Christ. Look to Christ, your Lord and Savior, your Redeemer. Here is where your sin and mine are taken and punished till there's no punishment left. That's the reality of God's eternal peace. The Holy Spirit pours it out again and again through the word and through the sacraments. This is the peace that we need, the peace that we crave, and finally the peace that we can't live without. But there's still another reason why the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost is so necessary. Because God's presence is also brought into our lives. Listen to what Jesus says. 
peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. Back in the day, there used to be a, such a thing called children's classics. Books that kids read in their elementary years across the country. Timeless tales that kind of shaped life. And one of those books was called Robinson Crusoe. It was a reminder that even though we may feel alone in the world, we're not really all alone. The story of Robinson Crusoe is really the life tale, the real life tale, of a man named Adam Selkirk, who found himself shipwrecked off the coast of Chile in the San Fernandez Islands. He lived on an island for weeks, for months, for years, and then finally one day, he saw human footprints. Human footprints in the sand. And that was Captain William Woodges, an English captain who had finally sailed across on the other side of the island looking for water. Robinson Crusoe, Adam Selkirk, was saved. My friends, we can look at our lives right now and think that we're all alone, that there's no one who cares or understands or even wants to get involved with kind of the problems that we're dealing with. But God has given us a sign. God has given us the reality that we are not alone in this world. While man desperately seeks life out in the stars with radio telescopes aimed to the distant parts of our universe and the galaxies, God has made his presence known to you and to me. He's the God who came as true man in his birth at Bethlehem. He walked through life and experienced life as we do. He preached, he taught, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, and then he suffered and died and rose again to assure us that we have a home with him forever. The world around us looks at this and says, this is all improbable. Jesus is probably just an imaginary figure, a myth, something that keeps the church going. But by the grace of God, you gathered here today to be refreshed and restored and to receive that wonderful peace, as Jesus says, that passes all understanding. And so God says to you today, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit has come. And as we open up the scriptures and let the scriptures speak to us, God brings us that peace that passes all understanding. You can't really begin to explain what it does, but it fills up all of those empty cracks, all of those crevices, all of that pit of despair that sometimes we find ourselves in. God comes and assures us we are not alone. The last thing I'd like to share with you is that these words of Jesus are my confirmation verse. My father, a pastor, gave those words to me. And I guess he kind of, kind of was a good person who understood human nature. Because as a kid, I was kind of fearful and afraid and timid. And those words have always kind of steadied me throughout my whole life. Because we don't know from day to day what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to occur. But yet, hearing these words of Jesus, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world give I give unto you, let not your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. That's the wonderful beacon that has brought light into my life. And I pray that as we celebrate this wonderful gift of Pentecost, that you will never lose sight of this glorious light that the Holy Spirit brings to all of us today. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit, through the word of the sacraments, is the lifeblood of the Holy Christian Church. And my friends, the word of the sacraments are the crown jewel of what the Lutheran Church is all about. My friends, you and I can be just as bold as the apostles in proclaiming Christ today. Because the world is growing darker and darker and darker. They need to find something that is going to fill those holes, those cracks, those crevices of despair and anger. Only God the Holy Spirit can do that. And He can do it through people like you and me. 
who understand God's words and promises and bring that light of the gospel to souls that desperately need it. So may Pentecost Sunday bring you the abiding peace of your Savior and the wonderful assurance that you are not alone. May the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ quell any kind of fear that you have in your heart because he is with you and he will be guiding and leading you through the Holy Spirit and through the word and sacraments. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise to confess our Christian faith in the words of the Ninth century. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things remain, who for us then and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has spoken. Comfort us with divine peace, and do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as you once chose apostles to proclaim the resurrection, so open the mouths of your pastors and people to declare the wonderful praises to all who will hear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God, sustain those who are mocked for believing and confessing the truth of the word, that they may remain faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have poured out your spirit upon us, that we might believe your truth and raise your sons and daughters in it. Bless all parents, that they may faithfully teach their children in your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord of might, preserve your people from their enemies. Bring peace to the nations and prosper the cause of life. Bless our leaders, especially our president, governor, congress, legislature, and all judges and magistrates. Give them a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all, with a heart of mercy for the weak and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of compassion, forget not the sick or the suffering. Grant them healing according to your will. Give them confidence that you know their need and will so well supply them with all that they need to endure to the day of your coming, when all afflictions will end, and you will grant them the perfect consummation to us and to all who have loved your appearing. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of grace, your Son has come among us and given us the privilege of a place at his table. Prepare us to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith for our good and for the flowering in our lives of your holiness and righteousness. Nourish and feed us that in this holy communion we may be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune Defend us against every error, that we may continue steadfast in this faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, 
obtaining obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our intercessory prayers this morning, we remember Joe Ebert, uh, and also John Hartfield, who is in the ICU at Theta and Nina, and also Karen Lager, who will undergo surgery. Let us pray. O Lord, you are our great physician of body and soul, and you chasten and you heal. We ask you to show your mercy upon these, your servants, to spare their lives, to restore them to strength. And as you gave your Son to bear our infirmities and our sicknesses, deal compassionately with them and bless them with your healing power. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful gift of medicine and for medical teams that are looking after their individual needs. But above all, dear Lord, cause them to call, call to mind your wonderful words and promises that not only bring peace for our bodies, but peace for our souls and for our minds. We commend them to your gracious care, soul and body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we also remember our graduates. Almighty God, you have wisely created the family as the foundation of society. And we thank you for the blessings that you provide to children with Christian fathers and mothers, the wonderful gift of a Christian home. Today we give thanks for the blessings that you have provided to these following young people. Blake Bartle, Emma Looker, Ellie Pomeranian, Haley Krause, and Caden Ehrenberg, as they graduate from universities and high schools. As their world begins to expand and their education and jobs take them from their childhood homes, be with them in the days ahead. Keep them steadfast and strong in the calling that they have received through Jesus Christ our Savior, and help them to see the truth that you reveal yourself as the God of love through the word and sacraments. Endow them with a rich measure of the Holy Spirit, that by his grace, they may, that your grace may sustain them in this faith. Direct their footsteps along the paths of righteousness. Prevent them from being overwhelmed by the attractions of this life and this world. Restrain Satan's temptations. Fill their hearts with gratitude for this wonderful gift of salvation given to them at their baptisms continuing to be nourished by word and sacraments, that they may use their lives to bring the gospel to those who are without Christ and therefore without hope. Guide and keep them and all of us through the years until by Christ's grace we come to that bright shore where we will live with him forevermore. Amen. Please be seated.
our service for only the meaning to give. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. On this day, your Holy Spirit gave birth to the church, providing courage and power to the disciples to proclaim your Son's resurrection and to invite all who heard to become part of this living church and house. And so with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
take and drink, this is the true blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed upon the cross for the remission and the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink, this is the true blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, bring you this peace that passes all our standing, comfort, strengthen, and preserve you in this true faith to life everlasting. Take drink, this is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed upon the cross for the remission and the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink, this is the true blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, bring you that peace that our Lord brings, the peace that passes all understanding, and preserve you, body and soul, to life everlasting, to part in peace. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed upon the cross for the remission and the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Say this the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bring you that peace that transcends all your sins.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close with our final song. Please be seated. So also, as the, uh, the prayer said, we recognize Blake Bartle and Emma Looker and Haley Krausing and uh, Kate Ehrenberg uh, for their uh, graduations this year and for their efforts. And may the Lord richly bless them in the years ahead. And I guess as your departing pastor, I'll just say, stay faithful. Okay? Stay faithful. That's important. Okay. Thank you. Those are the announcements for today. Thank you.